Today I am going to demonstrate how we can use the channel class from system.threading.channels namespace in ASP.NET Core application and how we can use the dependency injection container to inject dependency into the controller as well as the classes which will be used for consuming the messages from the channel. I have created this orders controller. The orders controller currently has two methods, a post and a put. I do not have any implementation yet. The goal of this is when we call the post method, we should be able to use the channel, which is going to queue up a message. And then we will have on the other side of the channel, the channel reader, which is going to read the message and do some processing. So for the purpose of that, I'm going to create a class called order processor and the responsibility of the order processor class is going to be processing order. Now, given that the order processor is something which is going to listen to the channel and every time a message comes in, it's going to take the message and process it. It is going to be running as a background thread. And for that, I am going to use iHosted service. If you are not familiar with iHosted service, I have a video on iHosted service. I am going to share the link of the video in the description below. So the iHosted service comes with start async and stop async. And here we are going to have a constructor for the iHosted service. And the constructor is going to take the channel object. And we are going to use the type a string for the channel. And what we are going to do in the start async, we will create a task. So it's a task dot factory dot start new. And inside of this task, we are going to do all the processing. So here, what we are going to do is we are going to start with a while loop. And inside of while, we are going to do channel dot reader dot completion dot is completed if not of this, meaning it is not completed, then we can do var response equal to channel dot reader dot read async. And we are going to await on this. And to support this, we'll make this delegate as async. And then once this is done, what we'll do is we'll just do console dot write line of the response and let us return this task back. And then here we'll just do a return task dot completed task. So this is essentially a order processor service, which implements the I hosted service. And then we are going to inject at the channel object and on start async, we'll create a new thread. And inside of this thread, we are going to continuously listen for new message. And this is where we are going to do the processing. Here I'm just doing console.write line, but in real life scenario, it can be going into a database or it can be going into a out of process queue to distribute the message to do some processing. And the next, what we will do is in the order controller in the post. First, let's create a constructor for the order controller and constructor also is going to take. It's going to take a channel of string. And we can declare a field for the channel and in post, what we will do is we'll do await channel dot writer dot write async and we can just write the incoming value into the channel. That's all we are going to do. Once we have done this, the next thing what we are going to do is we are going to go into the program and here to the dependency injection container, we are going to add the channel as well as the order processor. 
so for adding the channel what we'll do is we'll use builder dot services dot add singleton we need just one instance of the channel and then here we can say channel dot and the channel is part of system dot threading dot channel so i'll add the namespace and we can say channel dot create and i'm going to go ahead and create a bounded channel of type string because that is what we are using and for the bounded channel we can start with a capacity of 100 and the next what we will do is we are going to use the add hosted service so we'll do builder.services.add hosted service and for the hosted service we are going to add the order processor so now the order processor class is added as a hosted service and given we created a channel and added to the dependency injection as a singleton it will be injected to both the order controller as well as the order processor now let's run this application and once the swagger shows up what we will do is we will go ahead and try to execute the post so here we have the post and this is the console output so if we get into the post we try it out we say message from client execute it is going to show up here let's do another one and it's going to show up here as expected so now we have only one producer as well as one consumer let's try to add another producer in the order controller once we add a new producer given that we have only one consumer for this channel it is still going to go into the same channel so we can just do the exact same thing and here we can just do id plus and let's add a space in between id plus value now here we could have used string interpolation but for such a small string adding a plus is not going to have any meaningful impact so let's just do that and let's run so here now first we are going to try out the post second we are going to try out the put with an id and now in the console we can see both are showing up now what is happening here is as i mentioned when we execute this on the server side it is essentially just putting this message into the channel and immediately returning so it is creating an asynchronous background process behind the scene to demonstrate that what i am going to do is in the order processor here i am going to add a delay so i can say await task dot delay and let's add a delay of five seconds so now if i go back and run the application now when i execute the swagger function it is going to come back immediately whereas the response here is going to take five seconds to show up so let's just try this out i execute immediately it came back with 200 whereas the response is still not written and you see that the response came out after five seconds so this is one of the biggest advantage of using channel is that it creates an in-memory queue using which we can do asynchronous processing and return a response quickly of course we are going to use this for application where it makes sense not for every type of application this will be useful the application where it is okay to do an asynchronous processing or the system can be eventually consistent for those kind of system it will make sense to use a channel so you take a request drop it into channel and then let's process asynchronously to do its job rather than waiting on the entire processing to finish next thing i'm going to show is what is going to happen when we have another subscriber so instead of just being order processor if we have different class which is also going to take this message and do something let's see how it is going to behave and this is something critical to keep in mind since channel behind the scene is a queuing infrastructure 
the behavior is not going to be that both the class will get the same message but both the classes are going to get different message in a round robin fashion so let me show that so let's say another one is order writer and let's say this is writing the order somewhere and in terms of the constructor it is going to be same it's going to have channel string and this one also is going to implement i i hosted service and for the i hosted service i'm just going to copy paste this code for the start async and also for the stop async which is going to return a completed task and the next thing i'm just going to go ahead and add here another hosted service and this time it's going to be order writer now just to distinguish between order writer and order processor i'm just going to add a string here writer response now let's run this application now when we try it out now if i go ahead and try out the string two three times we can see in the output here the string is showing up in a round robin fashion since I have five second delay for the implementation, you can see it's taking a little bit of time, but you can see that the output is coming in a round robin fashion. So this is something critical to keep in mind when implementing a channel is that the consumer is going to share the messages which are getting in because it is a queuing. It is not an implementation like a fan out exchange where all the message will be given to every single consumer here the messages will be distributed among consumer in a round robin fashion. So if you have five consumer, you get five messages. The five message will be distributed among the five consumer. But if you have only one consumer, it will go to that consumer alone. So that is something very important to keep in mind. So this is all I wanted to cover for today's video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel and you think you are getting value out of this channel, please subscribe to this channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.